All right, this is part two of my questions for year 10 students at Concordia College. They're doing a documentary and I'm really excited to do this. It's amazing that these students are interested in this field of video game addiction or gaming disorder. And to me, this is a perfect example of why I do the job that I do and why I love doing my job. And that's increasing awareness and teaching children about the potential risks of using video games and playing video games, especially in the classroom. So we've got a great question here. Do you think a child's brain interprets Minecraft played casually differently to Minecraft being used in an educational environment? That's a great question. Now, if you look at the uh, global rankings of schools and the what we call the PISA studies, P-I-S-A studies, where they rank different um, educational systems. So they test kids and they find the average and uh, the top uh, education systems are places like in Finland and Singapore. And Australia is actually not doing very well at all. We're like number 20 something in the world. And we have introduced the one-to-one -one laptop policy for the last, over the last 10 years, you know, it was introduced in 2007. This was meant to be the technology revolution. So you would expect that if we have this fancy technology available to all the students, that we would be advanced, right? But no, it's not true. So why is this? So the, the PISA studies show that if you do not teach a child or a student how to read and write in the first place, and you give them a screen, they're gonna do the easiest thing and that's to play a game and play a game without an objective of learning. Does that make sense? So if a child, let's say for example, a child does know how to read or write, knows how to use Wikipedia, knows how to use internet, they are able to use a fancy piece of technology like a a Microsoft Surface or a MacBook Pro, and they can use it to their advantage to learn. But if you give a screen, a laptop or an iPad or whatever, to a child who doesn't know how to read or write, they're gonna just play games on the screen and they may not actually be learning anything. Okay, so we got that right. So it depends this question is very good and I think it depends on the individual child. Each child has the same potential, but each child might have different experiences and different levels of education. So, if, if, I, was to getting, if I was to get a child who's underperforming in a class and then take them out of that class and give them Minecraft, they'll probably play it as a game. They probably won't play it as an educational tool and they might not actually catch up to the other kids. They might, I mean, right now we're all talking about NAPLAN testing, right? I don't actually think Minecraft is going to help students do better in the NAPLAN test. Is there any advice as a psychiatrist that you can give parents or even teachers worried about using a video game usually not associated with educational benefit for the better. Is there any evidence to support this? Do you think other psychiatrists agree? Well, really, if you're, this is more of a Dalai Lama, Buddhist sort of thing. If you're worried about something, you need to ask yourself, the Dalai Lama said this, if you are worried about something, you need to ask yourself a question. Can you do something about it? Or is there nothing you can change? If you can do something about it, do that thing and you won't feel so worried. If there's nothing you can do about it, then you just have to let that thing go. Let the worry go. So if parents and teachers are worried about using um, games or Minecraft in the classroom, then the parents and teachers need to 
educate themselves about Minecraft, how it's designed, and really be up to date in terms of uh, effective teaching methods. From my understanding of what is required in a classroom for children to be successful, it's not about the number of students, it's not about their technology, it's about three things. It's about their relationship to the teacher, their connection to the teacher, clear objectives at the start of the lesson, and then feedback during the lesson. Now, if you're able to design Minecraft where the teacher can be involved and, be, and have a good connection with the kids through that medium, then you've met that first one. The second one is, can you embed into Minecraft some objectives that are actually educational, have educational value? So for example, let's say you're learning how to do long division in mathematics. Can you actually program that into Minecraft and can you say, yep, you've met that objective? Does that make sense? And then throughout the game, it has to be designed so that it, it says, um, you are doing well, you're in the right path, you're learning how to do long division. Now, if the kid goes off and starts killing zombies or wolves, then the system should be able to pick that up and say, no, you're not staying on task, you need to get back on task. So it's about having clear feedback. And video games are very good at that, but I don't know whether Minecraft actually allows teachers to monitor and give that amount of immediate feedback. I'm not sure what other psychiatrists think. Um, do you have any clients that constantly use Minecraft? Are any of their behaviors linked to them using Minecraft? I do have a few uh, clients or patients who really love Minecraft. To be honest, it probably is reputation-wise one of the better games, more well-designed games. But now it's been sold to Microsoft. I'm not sure whether they've changed it to make it more addictive or more risky. But I think it's more of a game that younger kids, Minecraft is a game where younger kids are more attracted to that game, it's more popular with younger children, and I tend not to see that many younger kids who are addicted because usually their parents are able to restrict and place firmer boundaries on younger kids because younger children are more likely to listen to their parents. When you get to the ages of 12 to 15 teenagers, then you're gonna have more chances of arguments with parents because the kids are now more likely to be interested in their social circles and their friends and their parents less so. So that's when, that's a typical developmental period where there are more conflicts and what I'm saying is, I guess, teenagers are more likely to pay, play other games such as Fortnite and Call of Duty and League of Legends, those kinds of games. I'm, I'm starting to wonder whether you're trying to convince your teachers to introduce Minecraft into your classroom. <laughs> All right, let me make one last video. I'm going to cut this one and make a third video.